We've been asked how someone would create a menu that unlocks buttons in a sequence. For example, when it's a process that requires viewing steps in order. I'll demonstrate two ways to do this based on whether you're using layers or slides in your interaction. For example one, we'll look at a slide using layers, where clicking on the Step 1 button shows Layer 1. The first thing to do is to edit the states for the buttons. We'll start by selecting a button and navigating to States. Most important is to create a disabled state, but I also include a visited and hover state. Next, make sure all buttons have an initial state of disabled. In the States panel, change the initial state here from the drop-down to disabled. From here, we'll add triggers that will change each button to a normal state, but only when the preceding content has already been viewed. So let's start with button one. When the user clicks this, it will launch layer one. And on this layer is where we're going to add the trigger that will change the state of the step two button to normal. Now in my example, I'm having the state change occur when the timeline ends on this layer. So I need to make sure that the learner cannot leave this layer until the timeline ends. One way to do that is to make sure that the close button for this layer doesn't show up until the end of its timeline, as you can see here. Another option would be to instead have the state change occur when the user clicks on the close button for the layer. That's a totally viable option, but something to remember is that in this case, the order of the triggers will matter. And you'd want to make sure that the state change occurs before the layer is hidden. Whichever way you prefer to configure the trigger, repeat the steps for the remaining layers so that the layer for step two will have a trigger to change the step three button and the Step 3 layer will change the Step 4 button, and so on. As for Step 1, we have that changing to a state of normal when the timeline ends on the base layer. This ensures that the learner will listen to all of the base layer audio and instructions before they begin the interaction. In the second example, we have a custom menu, and the buttons are instead branching to different slides. As each slide is completed, its next button will take the learner back to the main menu. While the experience is the same for a learner, as a developer, you take a different approach to building this that requires using variables. Start by creating a true-false variable for each one of the steps. I use this naming convention of step number underscore complete to make them easy to track. On each one of the step slides, add a trigger that changes the corresponding variable to true. For example, here on step one, we're going to adjust the variable by setting step one complete to true when the timeline ends on this slide. For each one of the steps, we'll have a similar trigger changing its related variable to true when the timeline ends on that slide. Back on the main menu slide, add triggers that will change the state of the next button in the sequence to normal when the timeline starts on this slide if the variable associated with the prior button is true. So for step two, we're changing it to normal when the timeline starts on this slide if the step one complete variable is true. And then we just repeat this for each one of those buttons. Just to make sure this is fully restricted, we're also going to add a condition to the next button trigger. This trigger will only allow the learner to jump to the next slide when the user clicks or swipes next if step four complete is true. Otherwise, we have an error layer that will show. Finally, note that in this configuration, we're going to set the slide properties to resume save state. Once you've added the necessary variables and triggers for each button, go ahead and test your file. The menu should be locked down so that the steps must be accessed in order.